you know, I'm not the spot, the spotlight or whatever it doesn't really bother me. I don't let it go to my head. I'm still the same guy that comes and cooks, you know. Yeah. The end of the day, I'm just a, the end of the day, whatever top chef, whatever, I'm just a cook, right? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. So I know because like quite a few people, they they let the fame get to their heads and stuff like that. So how do you keep like a low head then? Or? Uh, Humble head. Yeah, you know that's that's a good question. <laughs> it's tough, man. Like yeah. I've 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 caught myself slipping, but you've got to catch yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of staying humble and doing your job, and you know, not taking your finger out off the pulse. And yeah, staying relevant. You know, that's the biggest thing. Just you got to keep on your hustle. Like when you think that you're done hustling, that's when you should be hustling the hardest. The fine dining is missing our type of food, then. Your you're missing there's well there's I don't know if it's missing but there's room for it mm -hmm. and and right now uh, you, we're we're in the spotlight you know there's a lot more uh, top 50 in the world restaurants in Latin America now than there was five years ago mm -hmm. right they, they even created a whole you know top 50 Latin America because it's so hot right now. so going on to the the spin of Latino cooking and stuff like that being Latino, has it, if it has, uh, driven you to work harder to get where you're at? Yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know. Yeah, yes and no. Like, I don't know if it's it just specifically being Latinos mm -hmm. made me drive harder, but wanting to bring Latin American food mm -hmm. to the masses has driven me harder. Okay, right? uh, let me rephrase it then. Um, have you ever experienced any like problems because of your rapes or no? You're just uh, kind of smooth sailing. No, I don't think I've really. Yeah. Not here. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I've really, really experienced anything like that. The kitchen. In the kitchen, everybody hates everybody anyway, right? So there's. <laughs> I read that you um, you went to Miami. Yeah. To do some cooking yeah, there. Yeah. I spent uh, two years in Miami. Tell me a little bit about the, that well, experience. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, I just came from wanting to be the best Latino chef I could be, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, learning to cook in Toronto, there wasn't really anybody doing what I do. Mm -hmm. So I went to Miami to be as Latino as I could be, right? A whole uh, bunch of Cubans. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, man. My mm -hmm. first time in, in the mall, I would go into Target and, like, the cashiers, the Cuban lady, talking to me in Spanish. I'm like, man, I'm home. So why why leave that then to come here? Why not just stay in Miami where you can be less Latino? Well, I've I've left Toronto three times now. Yeah. And I find like just Toronto just always keeps calling me back. This is my home, right? This is where I grew up, and uh, this is where I want to blow up. Mm -hmm. And I don't think if it was for for Toronto, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Just like with the food scene that we have here right now, you know, so multicultural and, and just so many Latinos here. You know, and then I think with this new mentality of us like, helping each other and working together, you know, it's great. I'm glad I'm back. I'm Steve Gonzalez, and now I'm raised by Latinos. <laughs>